Hey everyone, Dr. B here, and um, I want to explain the uh, mastery training modules that are in MindTap. Um, this is, uh, if you have not used MindTap before, this is going to be, these, these will be a new thing for you. So let me explain how they work and how, how, how they're graded. Um, now, in, in psychology, as I, as I hope you know, um, we know an awful lot about learning, and um, this has been studied extensively over the decades in, uh, in the history of psychology, and we know an awful lot about it. And um, one thing that, we, that, that you don't even need psychology <laughs> as a discipline to, to, to know about learning is that distributed practice works better than mass practice, okay? So you've likely been in a sport, learned how to play an instrument, been in a performance in school or whatnot, in a play or whatever, singing, anything. And um, so in any of these kinds of situations, uh, sports, athletics, uh, uh, performance, uh, you know, fine arts, whatever, you, um, you, you, you engaged in practice. Now, before a recital, before uh, a season's first game, um, you didn't just have a single practice session. But uh, for many of us, that's what we do when we're in school. Um, we sit down just before an exam and uh, do a big cram session, or we sit down to write a paper all in one sitting. And um, everything else we know about learning material says that we should distribute it in time and, uh, and, and practice sessions. So um, my, uh, MindTap is uh, mastery training is, is all about trying to use those basic principles of distributed learning, distributed practice, and studying to, to, to benefit and master, help you master material. So that's what those modules will do. So they take, uh, they take some of the concepts in the, in the chapter and, um, and they'll call an individual term or concept a memory. And so every, my, every mastery training session has a set of, uh, I think typically around 30-ish memories um, that they're going to help you try to master. And then in some ways, these are sort of like glorified flashcards. So, you know, you've made flashcards, I trust, and studied them. So maybe you put the term on one side of the card and you put the definition on the other. And then you can study them either way. You can show yourself the, the terms and see if you can remember the definitions. Or you look at the definitions and try to remember the term. And in many ways, these, these mastery training sessions are a little, they, they're, they're going to resemble um, um, flashcards, I bet. So, um, now, um, so how you, you st when I sat down the very first time to do this, I, I had questions like that you probably may have had too the first time you sat down and did it. And I, I wondered uh, uh, how this works. And I wondered also, from you know, I looked at it from a student's perspective and like, okay, I'm sitting down to do this. How long is this going to take? Where's the end zone? What's the goal here? And it wasn't um, immediately intuitively clear from and maybe I was bypassing instructions and videos that would explain this all better than I am right now. But um, let me just give you my my take on how these things work and how I'm going to be using them to to, to grade. Uh, how do you get the grade? So I'm planning on making every mastery session worth 30 points. So how do you get the 30 points on an individual mastery training uh, module? Um, you have to you have to you have to get there in in two ways. So one one way is to master all of the memories, all of the concepts. So you eventually need to be able to answer them all correctly. The And it's done in a completely non-threatening, at your own pace sort of way. So you're free to fail. You're free to um, stumble and fumble through, through that. So no worries if it takes you um, a while to, to answer them, but you must, to get the full 30 points, you must eventually be able to answer them all. Not necessarily all in one single routine or at one, you know, in a row, but you eventually must be able to answer, get them all, you know, get them all correct. And in the different ways that it, it tests you, there not there aren't thirty questions, and you have to get thirty questions right. Again, there's thirty concepts, and it's got different ways that it will test you on that concept. So you eventually have to master the thirty concepts, not thirty questions. I hope that makes sense. And then the other goal that you have to get to is you have to achieve what MindTap calls. You have to get to what they arbitrarily have called the 0.5 level of mastery. They have it set up on a scale from zero to, I think, four, 
I think four is the top longest, um, the highest level you can put on for master. And um, so um, you need to get to, to, to point five. Now I can't tell you how long that, once you start doing it, you'll, I, I believe you'll, you'll immediately see what I'm talking about once you've done some of this mastery training for a little while. You'll see, oh, I see what they're doing here. You have to do you know, the progress slider and you need to get to the 0.5 level. You can go beyond that. I'm not going to, you know, you can go all, you can keep doing these things for as long as you wish and as long as you're benefiting, okay? So, um, but to get the 30 points, you must get to 0.5 and be able to answer all those questions, those memories correctly, okay? So, um, I hope that makes a little bit sense and helps you understand what your end goal is and you know how you achieve that. So, um, another quick thing I want to tell you about that is it's it's trying to it's trying to force you to do that distributed learning. So it gives you a bit, like maybe I think ten memories to t to teach you and then test you on at a time, and then and then it, down in the corner you'll start you'll get to a progress report or something and then it, you'll notice in the corner it has a number of hours it wants you to wait before you continue. So they're expecting that you'll close up, just and it'll save your progress, save your work for you. So you exit out and go do something else and then come back and open it up and do some more. And then it will, at another interval, it'll say, okay, come back in uh, another certain number of hours. You don't have to come back in exactly that many hours, but you must, you're supposed to wait at least that much time. Um, just like practice, okay, so even though you might be learning a piece on the piano, you know, you practice and practice, you know, you oh, okay, I think I do this pretty well. Well, you know, you go away and you come back in a day or a week or a month and you, you know, just realize like, oh, I don't remember it as well as I thought I did. I mean, that's the way, unfortunately, memory and learning works. So this is trying to, you know, repeated you know, exposure. There's a mis misconception among students that I always try to explain. So, um, we often think that if we understand something, we'll remember it. And I trust that you have discovered many, many times in your life that that just isn't always the case. So as a silly example I always give people is, um, I just said five sentences. Could you recite them back to me perfectly? And you probably understood what I said if you were paying attention, but you probably, and I couldn't repeat them back to you either. Okay, so we mistakenly think that if we understand something, we're going to go on to remember it. And that just isn't how it typically works. So don't be thinking, you know, when you answer a question correctly, don't think, okay, I know this now and forever. So this mastery training has you come back and it will repeat questions. You'll get questions that you got right, but it's got artificial intelligence going in. It will throw in uh, items that you were stumbling with. So you will notice that, hey, things I didn't get right are coming back more frequently than the things I did get right. And so anyway, keep plugging away like that, practicing a little bit. It's kind of like doing flashcards, and you put them away, and you pick them up, and you do them later. All right, now uh, one more more thing I want to say is um, um, they have, there's an app that you can get for your phone or your tablet, and it's clearly marked on the inside when you're in mind tap. There's links to it or information about it. So I, if you, you know, you've got a smartphone or a tablet, I definitely encourage you to, to download that and take advantage of that so you've got some free time. You're waiting on a bus. You're waiting at, you got a little break at work or whatever. Instead of just sitting around uh, you know, texting your life away. Um, um, sorry, I couldn't resist that. Um, open up the, the MindTap app and bust out a few more memories for you know five minutes. So I always encourage students to look for those little tiny pockets of time that we typically waste. So time management is one of the biggest keys to doing well in college. And um, don't always think you have, don't always look for the big two, three, eight hour block of time when you're gonna sit down and you know read a chapter and cram and learn everything at once. Break it up, do it a little bit here and there, okay? Um, 10 minutes, five minutes, you'll, uh, you do that repeatedly and it'll work. Now, um, keep in mind you can't, uh, so that's just, you know, they're, they're make, they want you to distribute your practice like that and your learning, so that means you can't sit down and bust out a mastery training in one sitting. The students are reporting back to me that they actually can and um, they're not doing it right. So. Um, it, even though it says in the timer that you should go away and come back in five hours or something like that, they it will let you continue. It will let, you know, it'll ask you more questions. 
but I want you to notice that your progress slider just goes, starts to crawl, okay? It's, it's trying to sort of disincentivize you from sitting there and, you know, they wanted you to go away and come back later. So it gives you just smaller and smaller progress. It, 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 it probably it, it probably takes you longer to get to the 0.5 level, busting it, trying to bust it all out in a single or two settings, than if you follow their lead. It, they, you make bigger jumps towards 0.5 if you follow the rules and come back, you know, a certain number of hours later. So you can beat the system, but it's you're going to just it's not going to benefit you, and it's probably going to wind up taking you more total time than um, doing it the right way. So. Try to take advantage of this, you know, tough love built in, um, you know, use of what we know about learning and psychology since, hey, you are a psychology student, okay? So I hope that helps make the mastery training modules make more sense. So I hope that was helpful. Okay, enough for now. Uh, keep up the great work, and I'll see you here another time. All right, bye-bye for now.